Hey friends, you're never gonna believe what we're doing today. So yeah, we're getting wild, getting crazy up in here. Um, today we are going to be chopping up my philodendron Milano chrysum. I think that I'm going to completely chop this plant up and make a bunch of babies and kind of start over. It's grown so crazy. Um, I love this plant so much. It's one of my favorites. It outgrew its moss pole. Let me move this closer. It outgrew its moss pole at obviously this point at the top. So I cut it here and it, or I cut it here, you can see. Um, and it put out a new growth point, this vine here, which has several new leaves. This thing is like too tall to even get in the frame, but it has several new leaves on there. Another one is on the way also. And I just don't know what to do with it. Um, so I think that I'm going to be chopping it all up. Um, I'm also just kind of getting rid of a lot of my larger plants because I'm moving soon. And yeah, I don't know. I just think it'll be a fun experiment to propagate this as well. Um, when I chopped this, I did air layer it and it like rooted up awesome in moss. So I think I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try my perlite propagation box. I'm gonna try water propagation. Um, I guess I can try sphagnum just, you know, just, just for the fun of it. Um, so yeah, it'll be a fun little, it'll be a fun little video. I think that I'm going to wait until they root up so that I can show you guys the progress and just compare which of them rooted the best. So today is August 3rd. Um, so I don't know how long it's going to take for this video to come out, but today we are going to be chopping this baby up and starting the little cuttings off, starting the propagation journey. So yeah, I'm really excited. I've actually been meaning to do this for so long and I just hadn't gotten around to it. So we're doing it today, you guys. We are doing it. I don't even know how I'm going to do this. Let me move my coffee. Oh yeah, so this was the top cutting. Ugh. This was the top cutting that I took um, from there and it has just kind of been chilling. Um, I neglected this a little bit and it doesn't have a pole or anything to climb so it's been giving me some really small little leaves. It's in sphagnum and the problem is that this sphagnum will dry out and I don't water it in time enough so then it's been impacting, impacting the leaves but I'll probably chop this. I don't know where I want to chop it. I'll probably chop it. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to have so many babies. I'm going to have a whole army of these. Okay, so I'm just going to cut it all up to start and then we'll decide where I'm putting each of the cuttings um, after that. So, I'm nervous. Um, I guess I'm just going to do like single node cuttings I don't know some of them I can actually do wet stick as well um, yeah all right I'm just gonna do single oh there is the top cutting oh it's so soft oh man I love philodendron Milano chrysum like how beautiful it's so pretty I'm obsessed. Okay, just gonna put them down there until I'm ready. So this was a leaf that didn't ever turn into anything. So I'm just gonna chop that and I'm gonna probably just root that as a wet stick. It doesn't have a leaf on it. So it'll be interesting to see um, how the wet sticks do as well. We were actually talking recently in my Discord chat um, with my patrons about how wet sticks grow like the most perfect leaves so it'll be cool to see these wet sticks come to fruition look at that tiny little leaf on this one it's so cute it smells like a pine tree okay so let me think about this this that one already has that node okay so i think does that make sense oh 
I guess I need to move my camera down a bit. So dark. Okay, I'm just going to cut this off as one to start with. Because this has the spot where I cut before. So I don't know if anything would come out of here since it was already it already grew from that node. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I'm going to keep this attached to it and um, I can see a little growing eye growth point right there. So something should grow from there. Um, okay. There. Ooh, now we're getting to the point where they're really rooted into the moss. I'm going to have to wet it, I think, to loosen it up. So I just wet the moss and kind of wiggled it out. It doesn't have crazy roots that were in the moss, so it wasn't too bad. There we go. Looks very similar to the others. These are all gorgeous leaves too, like these cuttings, holy crap. So nice. Okay, I've got to decide. Mm, no, you know, I think I'm going to cut the whole thing up. I don't think I really want to keep the mother plant because it would need to be repot. Well, maybe I should and I can just repot it. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so this is the other smaller one. I think for this one, I am going to keep these two leaves and then I will pot this up soon out of the sphagnum and grow this as a plant, but I am gonna cut these top ones off. I'm just not happy with these leaves. So, well, this one is okay. I can work with this one, but these ones I'm probably just gonna remove and um, grow them as wet sticks. So let's just chop them up here mm. wow i have so many cuttings <laughs> holy crap okay okay so here is a look at all of the cuttings that we have so i just organized them into the ones that i'm going to keep the leaves and then the ones that are going to be wet sticks so there's quite a few of each, as you can see. I think there's 11 or 12 of these guys, and then I'm not sure, probably about the same amount of those. So yeah, right now what I'm gonna do is just trim some of the stems off. Um, you don't want there to be too little amount of stem because if a little bit rots, then you can just chop it off. But I also don't like it when the stems are super long. I just find it harder to like pot them up and whatnot. So. I'm just gonna do some trimming. I'm also gonna take the leaves off of these ones and then I am getting my boxes ready here. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be using my perlite box. Um, I'm gonna do some, what am I gonna do here? Some uh, cups of perlite and cups of sphagnum. That's gonna be a sphagnum prop box for a few wet sticks. And then I'm also gonna do some in water. So yeah, we're gonna have all kinds of things happening here, you guys. So. Yes, uh, let's get these all ready to go.
Okay, so I have 12 of these guys and, oh shoot, what was it, 10? 10, 10, I think, of the wet sticks. So I am going to, let me, let me figure out how I'm going to do this. <laughs> Okay, I had to think about that for a sec, but I think I've got it sorted out. So I'm gonna do five of these in sphagnum, five of these in perlite, and then I have split these into three groups of four. So um, four are gonna be in perlite, four are gonna be in sphagnum, and four are gonna be in water. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get them in. I'm so excited. So here are two of the water propagations. I put them in my little propagation wall station thing. Um, so I put two of them there and then I put two of them there. I was gonna put them all in separate vessels, but I just figured this would be easier for maintenance and whatnot. So here are the other two. These ones are a little bit closer to the light. So we'll see how it goes. I'm so excited to see the results of this. And I'll show you the rest of what's going on down here. So here's the perlite propagation box. We have our five wet sticks near the top and then we have our two leaf cuttings um, hanging out right there. I just kind of, let's see if I can show you. I just kind of gently covered the nodes um, or aerial roots with perlite and then these guys, I just laid them on their sides. I'm not sure like which side it's gonna grow from. So as soon as I see any type of growth point, I always just face that up. But yeah, so that is all ready to go. And this propagation box lives up there, so it gets light from that grow light. And then here we have the rest. This is like so satisfying, the way that this looks to me. <laughs> Um, so here's my sphagnum propagation box. Uh, we have our five wet sticks near the top. I don't know if this one really counts because I know that there is a node there, but uh, there's none of the aerial roots or anything. So I don't know what that one is going to do. It's like it was near the top cutting, so you can like hardly see any nodes, but um, like there should technically be, it should be a node there. But anyways, um... So I have my two and I kind of did the same. I just like gently covered the stem with sphagnum. I'm hoping that this lid isn't going to touch the leaves. Oh, it touches a little bit, but uh, I don't know. Let me see if I can make this 
go any flatter. Not really. I think I'm just going to have to risk it. Oh, wait, does it go this way? No. That would be really bad. It goes like this. Okay, so it's ba it's barely touching, so it should be fine. Okay, I can't do this with one hand, but I will fasten that after. And then we have our sphagnum cup ones here. Um, so I just potted them up in there. And um, then similarly, we have our perlite cups. Um, you guys know I love propagating in perlite, so I'm excited to see how this goes. I am going to fill these up with water uh, about a third of the way. That is typically how I do it. I have a video all about rooting in perlite if you're interested, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess that is going to be the end. Here, let me turn the camera. Okay, so that is going to be the end of today's little portion. I will hop on here and update whenever something happens. Um, but yeah, I hope that you guys are liking this video so far and I will talk to you when I have an update. Okay guys, so it has not been long at all. Uh, I don't even think it's been a week since we propagated the Milano Chrysum, but I did just want to pop in for a quick update because I was looking at them today and I did notice something. I have to, okay, I think it was on this one. I was looking at my water propagations and we have a little bit of a root growth action. Do you see that white tip? on the end of there so it's just starting to root up in water i also could see it on this one as well there's a couple spots where there's little white roots coming in let's check out the other ones oh wow these ones are even more so look at that you guys it has not even been a week this one is the one that's closer to the grow lights so that's probably why there's a little bit more roots on that one Let's just, for fun, look at the perlite and sphagnum. I'm sure that we're not going to be able to see anything. And I don't want to pull it out, but I bet you we have some root action in there, you guys. And sphagnum. Not going to be able to see anything, but they all look perfect still, the cuttings. So I'll definitely update when I do see something on these guys. A lot of condensation. I did re-moisten these once, uh, I think yesterday or the day before, because they had dried out already. But yeah, I will definitely keep you posted. I can't believe we've already got some root growth though. Okay, I am popping in with another update. Today is August 19th. Not sure how many days it's been, but I will have everything on the screen. Um, I'm actually getting ready to move in a couple of days and it's just absolute chaos around here, but I noticed how incredibly rooted some of these Milano Chrysum are. So I had to hop on here and do an update before I move. Um, I might end up getting rid of just a couple of these cuttings, um, but I'll still have, I'll still be keeping a lot of them for the purpose of this video. Um, but yeah, I've just got, I've got so many plants to move. Um, but let's just, let's just hop right into the update. So these are obviously in water. Um, these are the ones that are closest to my grow light. And look at these roots we have going on, you guys. Holy crap, a lot of roots on that one. Um, the other cutting in there has some pretty long roots as well. So that was the like main one that caught my eye. Actually, there's another one in the prop box I will show you that caught my eye as well. Let's take a look at the other ones in water right here. So these are further away from the grow light, but they still have some really decent roots on them as well. Check that out, amazing. And then down here we have our sphagnum and perlite guys. I can't really see much and I haven't gone digging around so maybe we'll do that later. Um, on another day I will go ahead and kind of gently pull them out and see what type of progress we have but you'll be able to see in the propagation boxes that uh, sphagnum and perlite are definitely working so let's go take a look. Look at how empty everything is in here, it's crazy. 
Okay, let's look in here first because there's something really cool happening in this one. Okay, so there are the Melanochrysum and if you can see that one right there, it has put off a new growth point and there's tons of roots. Look at those roots. So crazy. I'm sure there's tons of roots actually down there in the perlite, but I saw that growth point and I was just like, wow. Like perlite propagation boxes, you guys, they are game changers. Like these are all super well rooted. These could probably be potted up, the ones that are in here. And then as for my wet sticks, I haven't noticed, oh, there's some rooting happening there. I haven't noticed a ton of progress. However, I did notice that this one has a visible little growth point right there. Oh, okay, there is that focused. You can see there is a little growth point there. So I'm gonna put him back in. Um, yeah, so doing really well in this one. And then we have our little sphagnum propagation box, which is so cute. Um, oh my goodness, I see a little growth point on that little wet stick. Amazing. And then um, these guys, oh, I can see roots. Oh, can you see those fuzzy roots? Wait, where is it? I can't see, right here, right above that sphagnum. It's probably blending in and really hard to see, but ooh, there is a big fuzzy root right there. And then this one, let's kind of take a peek. Yep, I can see roots um, starting right there, a little cute one. So those are both doing well. So far, all of these cuttings are doing really well. I have not um, had any of them die. I have not lost any of them yet. Knock on wood. But yeah, the next update I do is definitely gonna be in my new place. So uh, cross your fingers that we have all traveled well. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? So it is October 25th, Monday, October 25th today. So I don't even know like the last time that I did an update on these Milano Chrysum wet sticks and propagations, but I know it's been a while. I don't even know if I've done an update since I've moved and I've been here for a couple of months now. So today I'm going to most likely be potting up a whole bunch of them because it just looks like they're taking off. I have a lot of new leaves. Um, yeah, a lot of exciting growth and today I'm going to give you an update on all of the propagation boxes and the ones that I have on my kitchen windowsill over there. And then yeah, like I said, I think that we are going to pot some of them up. Very exciting. These things have just propagated like a dream and I'm really excited to show you them. So let's go take a look. Okay, so here is my prop box situation right now. I have Milano Chrysum in that one, that little one that big one up there, um, and I think that's all the ones that I have in the bedroom, so let's take a peek. Okay, so this one is the one sphagnum propagation box that I had set up. And these guys have been doing amazing. They are so happy in here. Uh, we have multiple new leaves, so that is a new leaf right there and then that is also a new leaf this one still has a bit of that orangey kind of look that the new leaves get uh yeah tons of roots a lot of aerial roots too so basically all of the ones that have given me new growth i would say are ready to be potted up so i'm just going to take a look and see how many we have and how many pots i have as well also, I just wanted to say that I have not moistened this sphagnum moss throughout this whole time. So it's been months and yeah, I've literally done nothing to this prop box. I've opened it maybe a handful of times to check on it and to give you guys updates. But other than that, I've just completely left it alone. So yeah, and I also lied. There's no Milano in here, but there is in this one. Oh, you can see that new leaf, that beautiful orange new leaf right there. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna grab that one down. Okay, so this is what we have got going on in here. We have a couple of new leaves. We have that beautiful orange one right there. Oh, that's just so pretty. And then we also have another orange one coming in right there. Still kind of furled, but looks like it's ready to open right away. And then there are some leaves on some of my wet sticks down there, which is just awesome to see. And then I can see on this one over here, there's also a new leaf. So yeah, these have done so well. 
in both perlite and sphagnum moss. I didn't continue with the water propagation ones just because it was too much work to move them all. I kind of just threw them in to my prop boxes. So I think that this was actually originally a water propagation one. But as you guys could see from the beginning of the video, um, they rooted awesome just in water as well. So really, I think that any propagation method that you like to use would be fine for philodendron melanochrysum. They've all just done so well. Okay, so here we are in my kitchen and I have this one in sphagnum moss, which, okay, let me turn a light on. It's so dark and rainy out today. Okay, so this is the one in sphagnum moss, obviously, and it's putting out that new growth right there. This one has been doing amazing. Um, it's actually doing better than the one beside it that's in perlite. This one is just having a little bit more trouble putting out a growth point there. It seemed to just take a little bit more time than in sphagnum, um, which, yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess it's just surprising to me because usually things root faster for me in perlite. However, I think for the propagation boxes, I started to see the first growth in the perlite propagation box and then later in the sphagnum box. So I don't know. Maybe it just depends. Um, obviously, these are only like one of each in these cups now. So it's not like an accurate, it's not accurate data. Okay, you guys. So the last clip was... A couple of days ago, I made a moss pole and then I got distracted. I don't remember what I did. I think I ended up running out of the house to do something. Anyways, got distracted doing other things and um, I'm, I'm catching back up with you now. So we are going to be potting up all of these propagations that I have in front of me, which is so crazy. I cannot believe I just posted this one on Instagram because this is like the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Look at that, that new leaf, the color. It is so, this whole cutting, this is so beautiful. Look at that's the original leaf there. And those two are new and look at the roots. These all have incredible roots on them. Well, I've only seen the perlite ones, but they're all, um, I'm assuming they're all really well rooted these sphagnum ones as well. I'm going to actually pull the sphagnum ones out of here right now. So we'll see what they look like. Ooh. It was actually really difficult for me to pull these perlite ones out of the prop box because there was just so much roots. I was scared I was gonna snap them off and I kind of feel the same type of way with this one. Okay, I'm just gonna Oh boy. I'm just gonna gently try to remove as much sphagnum as possible. Oh yeah, these roots are wild too. Okay. Oh my goodness. This is honestly another reason why I prefer propagating in perlite because it's so annoying to have to take this sphagnum off of all the roots and it's just like tricky to tell apart the moss from the roots and the perlite ones I can literally just pop them in like I'll just plant them with that perlite on because it's not going to cause any problems but I don't want to stick like this massive of a hunk of moss into my pot. So I have to take some time to remove it. It doesn't need to be 100% off. Like I will pot it up with some moss still on the roots and I've never had any problems, but I do remove like the bulk of it. Okay, so that is good enough for me looks awesome uh, I'm gonna check and see I think there might be one more that I'm going to pot up in here but I'll do that off camera and I will hop back on once I've got all my cuttings ready to be potted up okay so so far the biggest difference when it comes to propagation method for these guys is having the cuttings in a closed environment 
I would definitely suggest propagating these in a prop box if you are able to, rather than just having them in the cups like I did. Um, I wanted to test out, you know, various methods. That's why I had some in the cups, but both of my cup ones, oh, um, I will say the roots are a little bit more substantial on the sphagnum one, although they're honestly kind of similar. But I will say neither of the cup ones have an actual second leaf yet, whereas all of the other cuttings that I'm going to be potting up do have a second or even sometimes third leaf out. So the humidity is really going to help these guys out uh, if you are going to propagate this plant. But in general, um, these are so easy to propagate. I don't think I've had any failures. I do still have some wet sticks. I'm not potting up all of the cuttings that I took. I do have a few wet sticks still in the prop boxes, but none of them have rotted or anything like that. Like they're all doing well. So yeah, that's so awesome to see. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this black plastic pot and my moth hole. Whoop. Okay. So I made this moss pole, which is about two feet long or tall. I made it as tall as would fit in my Millsbo wide um, Ikea cabinet because I think that that's where I'm going to put this guy. So I'm just going to fill up a little bit of the pot. Actually, maybe I'll put the pole in first. This pot isn't super deep, so I'm gonna get this guy in. Whoop. Actually, you know what? I think I want to put the pole in the middle like I did with my philodendron Brazil. Okay, I'm gonna start over. I want to put the pole right in the middle. Okay. I'm gonna see how much depth Oh man, I cannot believe the roots on this one. They're just so massive. Okay. This is going to be magnificent when this plant grows, you guys. Like, holy crap. Um, okay, it's kind of tricky. I have to hold the pole also. I think that will be good for those ones. Oh man, yeah, this is gonna be hard. How can I make this easier? I don't know. Oop. I'm just gonna go around the pole. Hopefully you can see okay. some more soil now. Let's see if I move this up. Okay, so it is all potted up. I just thought I would give you guys a closer look. Looks really good and the pole seems to be somewhat sturdy in there. 
once this plant kind of roots more and starts attaching to the pole, everything will just become a little bit more sturdy. I'll show you this beautiful leaf right here. Ooh, it looks so good. I love that so much. I was thinking of attaching this on, but I think I'll wait until it gives me one more leaf. I just don't want to damage it at all. So yeah, but like I said, it's quite tall, so it has a lot of room to grow. I'm anticipating this to grow big and strong. So right now I am just going to give it some water. Uh, normally I would throw this in the shower since it has a moss pole to wet the pole and the plant, but since it is so um, unestablished right now, I don't want to disturb anything and just like pelt it with the shower water. So I'm just going to be gently watering it in the sink and then I'm going to take my, actually, you know what? This is moist. I was going to say I'm going to take my mister and wet the pole, but this is moist right now. So I just need to give it a water and then I'm going to hopefully find it a spot in my cabinet. It's pretty full in there right now, but I'm going to, going to find somewhere for it. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on my philodendron milano chrysum here so i'm getting a lot of new growth which is awesome this has been potted for about a week uh so i have this new leaf coming in right there so pretty still have this beautiful one yeah it's doing really well I'll try to show you some of the other sides uh, okay, so some of the older leaves down here. This was the growth point that was coming in on the perlite cup one. Um, it had like a growth point coming, but it wasn't doing anything, but now it is actually pushing out a leaf. So it's obviously happy to be potted up and to be getting more of the nutrients that it needs. There, you can see it a little bit better. Very excited to see that come out. Overall, the whole thing is just doing awesome. It's super happy in the cabinet here. And yeah, I like to have it facing this way so I can see that beautiful orange leaf. So since potting it up, everything is going great. I've just been trying to not let it like get super dried out. Um, just because they're transitioning from being cuttings to being a potted plant. So, uh, yeah, for another week or so, I'm probably going to keep it on the moist side and then I'm going to transition to regular watering, which will be letting this dry out pretty much completely between waterings. But yeah, I will pop in and update you guys once, I guess once it's, once I have a couple of vines that are long enough to pin to the moss pole, I will give you guys an update hello oh my goodness okay so today is march 14th i believe i'm gonna be posting this video today so um yeah i've just edited all the rest and oh my goodness what a journey like in so many different ways it's been almost eight months and yeah it was just like what a trip down memory lane editing that video it's so wild how things can change so much in just like a matter of months but anyways, today I'm going to be doing my final update on this plant because I don't really think much else is going to change. I kind of wanted to wait until I was getting some like larger, more mature leaves, but honestly we could be waiting like a year or two for that to happen if it ever does. Hopefully it does, but um, I figured I would just give my update. Um, this plant actually has grown more than I thought. It's weird because sometimes it feels like our plants aren't growing that much. And then when you look back on like old photos or footage, it's like, wow, okay, this plant actually did grow. Um, so that's kind of how I feel about this one. Oh my goodness, there's so many. I mean, you saw how many cuttings I potted into this. Um, so it's quite bushy. And once these all start climbing up, it's going to be pretty lush, I think. So I'm really excited for that. But yeah, as you can see, it's done really well. Um, this plant actually did get thrips, you guys, so I feel like that kind of impacted the growth. Um, if that hadn't had happened, then maybe this plant would be a little bit taller or a little bit more mature, but unfortunately that did happen. And you can see like here is an example on this vine. Um, I had to 
I lost some leaves and then got some like stunted leaves. Um, so this plant did go through it a little bit, but thrips are gone now, I think, I hope. Um, and I got this beautiful leaf. So yeah, it's doing really well. There are a few different vines that are climbing up the moss pole. I can see like little tiny aerial roots growing into there. I do my best to keep this moist and it is still living in the Millsbow wide. Um, and then as these, like as you can see, there's some that are smaller that aren't quite ready to be pinned on. Um, but once they are ready, then I just add them onto that moss pole and they can climb up. Like I said, I'm really hoping to get some more mature, larger leaves on this, but Philodendron Milanochrysum is like notorious for being difficult to mature. So if anyone has any tips for that or like resources, send them my way because I would just love, love, love to see this plant get um, larger leaves. At the end of the day though, I'm really happy with the results. I'm so glad that I chopped this plant up. I love doing this. You'll notice that I do this with a few, quite a few plants on my channel actually. I completely chop a plant up, propagate them all, and then pot it in together to make like a more full bushy pot or like climbing plant. I just think that it looks so much nicer. Um, this one's still in the stage where it like doesn't look super nice, but once this all kind of grows up, then it's gonna look great. Um, so yeah, I guess that's the update on this one. Um, so I did not pot all of my propagations into this. So I wanted to show you just a couple other little babies that I have um, from, the propagations and the wet sticks that we took so this is one look at how stinking cute that is and i also did trade and give away a couple of other um milano chrysan babies but yeah this is so so cute i just have it in a little plastic um uh pot as you can see in my chunky soil mix i will link like relevant videos down below if you're interested in in anything like i'll link my perlite propagation information um i will also link my soil mix um i can i can even link my moss pole anything that is like relevant to what i've done in this video i will link it in the description so you make sure you check that out um and then this is another this is the most recent one i've potted actually i kind of took like all the rest of the wet sticks that i could see in my box out um and just potted them into this so there's quite a few in here and this this i didn't do long ago maybe a few weeks ago so it's still like very young as you can see i might have like a couple more wet sticks kicking around in my prop box still i just had so many um it was honestly a little bit overwhelming but yeah what a fun project i hope that you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you like 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 um what's the word for it not time lapse videos that you know what I mean like videos that are filmed over a large amount of time so that you can see progress um, and see just like how everything goes let me know if you like that because I was so glad that I filmed this even though it's like a bit of a pain in the butt like filming videos for so many months I was so glad that I did this because it was just fun to watch everything come to fruition and just like it was just fun going back in time so thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below if you have any questions about this plant or about propagation or anything like that. I will do my best to get back to you. Also give this video a huge thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you are subscribed for more planty content and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!